hey hi everyone welcome back to my channel so today we're going to discuss nlp roadmap so if you are someone who are let's say beginner data scientist or someone you know who wants to do career in natural language processing today we will discuss you know how you should approach it you know what step by step things you should do what resources you should refer and what kind of a problems you can you know solve with that knowledge that's what something we're going to discuss today i have noted down you know some of the things that will be helpful for us you know to discuss so let me start this thing so i actually earlier shared you know the nlp roadmap on the linkedin i got really good response you know maybe you know uh, maybe one year back or maybe you know eight to ten months back something like that but today things has changed you know there are many libraries and a lot of things has been changed even the things i use right as my day-to-day -day job as a freelancer those things also have changed so if you don't know about me i am you know i'm pradeep i'm full-time freelance data scientist and I, you know, primarily do work on the natural language processing. So I'm like a, you know, expert weighted, uh, you know, freelancer on Upwork, which is like a top 1% on the Upwork. And I have earned more than $100,000 there using the same thing what I'm going to, you know, uh, discuss with me. So stay tuned so that I could, you know, tell you the step-by-step -step approach that you can, you know, become at least, you know, applied NLP expert. That's what we're going to uh, discuss. So first thing, before you're jumping into the natural language processing and all, since it's like a specialization in, uh, you know, machine learning, you should have a basic understanding of machine learning you know what exactly machine learning what is supervised learning what is unsupervised learning what is classification regression clustering all of those things if you are not familiar with those things you should go and check something else right maybe you should go and check you know machine learning roadmap or something like that so i assume you are already familiar with machine learning let's say you have tried logistic regression random forest those kinds of things but now we want to specifically discuss hey, how can I take my career to the next step, you know, how can I learn about natural language processing, what things we can do, that's what we're going to, you know, do in this video. So the first thing, when we talk about, you know, NLP, you know, which is all about text. So how do we going to pre-process the text? That is the first thing. Text pre-processing is the first thing, right? So for example, you have a big paragraph, you have, you know, uh, those web pages or it could be PDF file. You need to process them. You need to maybe, let's say, you know, uh, tokenize those particular uh, text into small small word you need to do lemmatization it's something called you know you want to remove punctuation all of those things falls under let's say you know text pre-processing so usually uh, you could use spacey there were earlier like an ltk but nowadays it's always good to use a spacey library you know to do the pre-processing kind of thing other thing is that let's say you could do pre-processing and the other thing is the text representation you know that right machine learning algorithms can't understand the text or words ultimately you need to convert those words into some form of vector representation or the number representation right so you need to understand what are the different techniques or different ways you can represent the text so that it can be given to the machine learning model let's say you know you want to do classification right let's say sentiment classification you have a reviews there could be positive neutral or negative reviews but you can't send that review text to the machine learning model you need to process in a such a that it becomes in the form of number so what are the different ways you can represent right so traditionally we have like you know we could use as a bag of words or the count vector you know you can simply create a vector saying that whether this word present or not whether the other word present or not or it could be something like this how many times particular word is present so bag of words for the count vector is one of the technique more sophisticated is like a tfidf technique and then you know you could go for the word to wake or doc to wake right those are like word embedding kind of thing so you should learn about them whether you're going to use it or not that's a different thing but you should have a definitely better understanding of you know what are the different ways you can represent the text or the words nowadays we have more advanced you know technique that we're going to discuss but this basic thing like bag of words tfidf word to wake talk to wake you should have definitely a better understanding of all these terms so that you understand you know how to represent the text once you understand you know tfid a bag of words then you can create the text classification kind of problem you can cluster the text using those feature or let's say feature engineering techniques you can call them those text representation technique right now this next thing you could do is actually something called information extraction right so let's say uh, you want to extract the name entities like you have some text you want to extract the name of the person uh, you know the name of the organization the places these are nothing but the entity extraction it could be something like you know part of speech tagging those kinds of you know uh, linguistic problem also so you need to understand the information extraction part of it again here you could use spacey to do these kinds of thing right when i talk about the feature engineering and all bag of words count vector tfidf you can use scikit-learn it has those function you know what to make i used to use jensen but you, you know you could see what other library uh, that you could use to do those kinds of things 
for information extraction and the uh, you know text field processing spacey is good that you know uh, you can use right but when you use spacey you will get pre trained model to extract the entities like name of the person name of the organization all of those things right but what if your problem statement is different you want to identify your own custom entities you are doing with something related to the medical uh, you know something related to uh, medical thing then you might want to extract the disease medicine and all of those things right you can get the pre trained model for them also you can search for those particular models which are already trained for those problem statement but ideally you should be able to train a custom name entity recognition model and this is also one of the problem statement uh, you know uh, that is regularly used i as a freelancer get many times to build this thing you know building custom name entity recognition models those entities will be specific to the business you are working if it is a banking they will have their own entities like account id you know account type and you know those kinds of thing that you need to understand now up to this point it was all about basic text pre processing representation all of these things right but to the go to the next level we need to go into the deep learning so you should be already familiar with the neural network deep learning and all sorts of those things right nowadays i won't say that you need to do let's say lstm or rnn kind of thing but at least have some understanding of let's say you know neural network and how this back propagation algorithm all sorts of things you know work uh, there are popular courses one of the popular courses from you know antwing you know that's uh, uh, you can find that course on coursera you can find on their own website which is deeplearning.ai right i will share those links uh, in the description or maybe i create one parallel blog post where i put all of this you know uh, information now once you are familiar with the neural network and all of this thing you need to understand the transfer learning right i did mention you will get the pre trained model what does pre trained model uh, mean right it means their existing model which you train on certain data set right so you could directly use them you will get pre trained model for sentiment classification you will get pre trained model for name entity recognition again some up might take that base pre trained model you know and then they can fine tune means you take one model which is already trained on some data but then you want to expose your own data set to it so that it understand the you know what are the nuances of your you know data sets what you have that's called the fine tuning and which is very important in machine learning right lot of time you will not get any model you know which is suitable to let's say your business problem if it is very simple like you know sentiment analysis or uh, you know extracting the entities which are very common like, as i mentioned the name of the person name of the organization and all of this thing you will get the pre trained model but if for your custom business problem you need to fine tune those models right similarly not every problem is like a sentiment analysis and a classification sometimes you have your custom categories you have some documents and you want to classify those documents into the different categories right in that kind of things you should know how to fine tune a classification model right so you can use let's say a transformers library right which is a famous library where you could uh, have models like a bird which is one of the transformer model then you have right uh, let's say t5 there are many models that you can fine tune you know i have created many videos right i talk about fine tuning the name entity recognition model i have video on that even the you know how to use pre trained model from the transformer there is a video for that and you know how to fine tune the transformer model that also i have created the video you can check other people's video also this is just i'm telling you these are the things you should definitely do no matter where you go and check them but you should definitely you know do so all of these things when we talk about the pre train this is the concept of like say transformer transfer learning and you should really have a good you know hands on on this thing there are some couple of good blog post also you know uh, those are famous blog post right i think illustrated transformer or something i'm not able to recall the name but i will share those link because those are very popular you know blog post with respect to this now up to this point you know you are able to build let's say custom machine learning model or text classification model you are able to build the custom name and date recognition model or even you use the pre trained model ultimately if your business wants to utilize them you need to deploy those models somewhere so that they can be accessible now it can be deployed as a web application let's say during the development you can use the streamlit application you know there is a streamlit python library using which you can build the ui so you can integrate those models there during the development purpose you know while iterating and all of this thing but ultimately when you put it into the production you know it needs to expose it as an api so that the other developers other front end guys like react js and all they can communicate with your api right so you need to build an api so where do you going to deploy this model most likely you will be using one of the cloud services like aws you know google cloud there is an azure and all of these things right i mostly use aws ec2 sometimes let's say if client has any other uh, you know cloud provider they are using they will share their you know vm details that i can connect to that vm and do the deployment there right so you need to understand this basic thing how do we deploy this model so that others can use 
for api you could use anything you know uh, for simple you could use flask there is a fast api also you could use i personally use fast api right and um, you could also do uh, using let's say you know aws lambda i used to do but it's better you stick to let's say flask or fast api you know to for the deployment purpose right now at this stage we are able to do um, this kinds of problem statement right entity uh, extraction classification all of this thing another thing you need to understand we talk about you know uh, different techniques in which we can represent the text we uh, we talk about you know you can do uh, count vector you can do uh, you know this uh, tfid what to make but you know nowadays we can use and create those representation using something called embedding right here embedding means converting your text into the vector representation once you have something in a vector representation you can compare different things let's say i have two document i create embedding for this doc these two documents and i can compare how similar using cosine similarity or other metric right so you should understand the embedding concept of embedding then it comes the semantic search also because how does google work let's say you search for something right google have all those pages index right then it needs to map those your query and find out what are the semantically you know matching document that can answer your query your web pages that can answer your query same thing applies to let's say you want to build question answering system right you have a lot of pdf uh, document hundreds of pdf document and you want to make sure you know you want to actually when users search something you want to find a pdf document which is more likely to answer this particular query so you will take that user query you will calculate its embedding then you will have embedding of your let's say documents or paragraphs right and then you will compare each of them and then eventually you know you will find document which has the highest similarity code or the semantic search right and that's what you're going to return which is very important nowadays we we use this very frequently right semantic search and all of this thing so what option do you have for the embedding uh, like most popular option is the open source you know sentence transformer embedding right which is you can use that library and you can create the embedding right you also have paid options like you have you know open ai embedding there is a coherent embedding but when it comes to embedding i stick to um, open source embedding they are pretty good i didn't find any reason to use actually the open ai uh, you know embeddings okay now let's talk about you know we talk about embedding and all of those things let's talk about the llm right the large language models which is like a buzzword and, and most of my work is actually related to the llms right so what are the llm right so most popular llm is like say open ai models like right? you know gpt 3.5 gpt 4 earlier it used to be gpt uh, let's say 3 but nowadays you have this open ai model now recently there is an open source model also called llama 2 which is released by you know facebook something which you can use commercially which is open source you can fine tune and commercially right i'm also exploring nowadays i don't have any first hand experience actually fine tuning that open source model but this is what also i'm going to explore nowadays right and now how does this all things come into picture right how does this things fit together what kind of problem we uh, solve with this thing right so i mentioned one of the problem statement that you know question answering uh, let's say we want to build something like you know hey i have a couple of documents pdf files now i want to build the system where i can ask the question and i should be able to get relevant answer from the you know my documents what i have right so typically uh, if you think of question answering and the chatbot there is a difference like let's talk about the question answering first right then what do you need first of all you need some way to you know uh, convert your documents into form of embedding so that they can be compared with the user query right so for embedding you can use again i said a sentence transformer library or you can use open AI. now let's say you got the embedding but then where do you want to store those embedding sometimes you might have thousands of or millions of vectors actually that you got right so you need an efficient way to retrieve those vector efficient way to match them right because you don't want to spend a lot of time you know uh, when someone is asking something their query right a lot of time is going into the matching with lots of document it will have very high latency right so it means you need some solution you need some database which is capable of efficient searching through those vectors right and that's where the vector databases come into picture so we have a paid version or the cloud version like pinecone there are open source version like a chroma db right you can try both of uh, them right personally i use pinecone and nowadays i'm kind of do lot of things on the chroma db right so you could explore those things also yeah i was talking about how does all these things fit together right so let's say we want to build that same problem statement the question answering now we are able to uh, you know create embedding of our document we store also to those documents in the vector database right now user asks something right user asks something then we check uh, that embedding match with against all the documents embedding what we have and we literally find out the 
okay we find it out of this thousand document these two documents can answer this particular query but we still don't have any answer we only know that these two documents can, can have this particular answer right so that was only semantic search we actually narrow down the documents that we could use right next step is the large language model then what can then what we can do we can take the user query we can take take those two documents that we got from the vector databases and we can give us the large language model like you know gpt 3.5 or gpt 4 and say based on these documents of the context can you generate the answer then it will generate that answer for you right so this is how you know embedding semantic search and vector databases and large language models work together right and this was question answering but what user want to ask some follow-up questions if, if they want to ask some follow-up questions right it means we need to remember what was uh, user was saying earlier and what the model has answered right that's where the conversational ai come into the picture like you know chat gpt kind of thing right and the, the people nowadays have this basic expectation because they are now used to with the chat gpt right so whatever things you are building, even question answering your or your documents or your PDF or even question answering on your own, let's say database like so you could even, uh, you know, uh, create interface where you can ask questions in the natural language and we can, uh, you know, check with the <laughs> let's say database and give you the SQL query or we can execute that SQL query and give you the result, right? So all of those things, right? I already have videos for this so I have a video for let's say you know how to use OpenAI chat GPT GPT4 how to build uh, you know products using it then how do we build the semantic search I have videos for both I have videos for you know how do we use you know uh, OpenAI and uh, ChromaDB together and how do we use OpenAI and Pinecon together to build you know this kinds of chatbot or the question answering system maybe I can give links of all those you know uh, video to you in a description so this is something let's say the latest state of the art applied in lp you know where you are able to take the large language model vector databases embedding and fit together and do you know lot kind of you know stuff and this is at the most demanding projects what we have so simply people want chat gpt for their own data that's what they exactly want right but can we find in gpt3 and gpt4 or gpt3.5 or gpt4 so basically not for uh, currently it's not possible so we could fine tune actually you know uh, gpt3 but gpt3.5 and gpt4 is not yet you know uh, there for the fine tuning maybe they release in couple of months or something like that but this is the way since it is not able to you know we can't fine tune it and we can't put all the information inside the prompt that is what we are using semantic search so when user asks something we find out through the thousands of documents what is relevant to that query and then we put that particular document into the prompt this way we don't need to fine tune right we can dynamically put or augment the uh, large language model with the recent information right this is also one of the thing because chat gpt will be let's say uh, you know trained from like say last one or two years of data right and it doesn't know anything recently what is happening it doesn't know anything about your company and your company document right so this is the way you can actually augment that your own information using semantic search embedding and that you can put dynamically inside the prompt so that's something is very interesting and there are a lot of problem statement nowadays we have right now since large language models are getting popular there should be easy and you know better way to build those applications right so that's why you have two popular libraries one of the most popular is the langchain right so langchain is the library using which you could build the large language model application right and that's that is something i also use the most of the cases you know it it has really good utilities to you know chunk your pdf files create those chunk it has interfaces with let's say uh, more large language models like open ai and the vector databases right that makes things uh, very neat and clean but sometimes i prefer a plain open ai library sometimes i go with the you know this if it involves a lot of you know uh, document processing interacting with different different things if you want to do let's say you know natural language to sql kind of a thing that's where also i use langchain langchain sql agent i also have a video on the langchain so you can go and check i have a video with langchain and with all these other components like pinecone and uh, let's say chroma db and all of those stuff and i think um, i also have a video on the langchain and sql agent how to build natural language to sql interface that is also something you can take then another popular library is llama index right so actually they both have some kind of overlapping thing when it comes to connecting to the different data sources right whole idea is how do we you know take our data and give it to the llm or how do we augment llm with our own data so they also have a lot of connectors llama index for example if you want to connect to your google doc if you want to connect your notion pdf files all those kinds of you know connectors you can connect and infuse that data into the large language model 
when it comes to indexing the document means creating the vector representation and storing them somewhere right llama index has much more to offer there are different ways you can create that index it can have a different structure like tree structure i think table keyword index normal simple you know list index there is a lot more you could do with the llama index nowadays they have something called you know data agents also right uh, the way you can interact with the data and all of this thing both these libraries like langchain and the llama index right they kind of nowadays started having some kind of you know overlapping uh, kind of a thing so usually if i want some kind of agentic behavior like sql agent you know some kind of intelligent behavior i usually use langchain kind of thing but let's say if i want to experiment you know uh, different ways i can index the document and see how the accuracy of semantic search is improving most likely i will also experiment with the llama index and their latest data agent or something i'm i'm just exploring i haven't done much work into that actually that is something i will be exploring nowadays right now with all of those things we talk about there right if you uh, if you want to build an end to end application right so we talk about building this machine learning application you know deploying them on ec2 creating api so that other people can consume fine tune those model and all of these things right but you should also have some understanding of database for example where are you going to store this all information sometimes the information required for uh, let's say this large language model or your machine learning models are available in the relational database so you should have understanding of let's say database like mysql postgresql right you did the prediction you want to store those predictions somewhere right you need some way to capture record and get so i would definitely say if you really want to you know uh, do an end to end application or something you should definitely have understanding of the mysql or let's say some relational database that you should be able to handle right other thing currently you know whole this things right deploying application and then you need to monitor whether it is working well when you deploy the application you can take also feedback from the user let's say just like on chat gpt you can give feedback whether you like response or you didn't like response right anywhere you have done the prediction there you can ask for the feedback and you can store that feedback in the database later you can analyze that or you can even use that things to fine tuning that particular model right now this whole thing is also called the ml ops deploying your model monitoring it you know capturing the feedback making sure model uh, you know performance is good so there are different uh, tools that you could use like there are ml ops there is a quick flow i think i used to start so not the ml ops there is ml flow that i used to use earlier right and then uh, you could use weight and biases right so there is a course also so there is a famous like andrew ng course on uh, you know evaluation of llm uh, i haven't seen that full course yet but uh, which is actually done with the you know collaboration with weight and bias you can uh, watch that actually uh, course there is a course from the andrew ng also for the prompt engineering that also you know uh, you can check and again whatever the things i am talking to you uh 90 to 95% of the things i use in my day to day job and i have a videos for each of them so i would suggest at least go and check on my channel see whether you have any uh doubts so there are many videos what i talk and each of these videos is practical and available with the code you can literally do use that code and if you have any doubts you can message me on linkedin sometimes i'm not able to answer but most likely you know i try to answer if you message me with whatever the you know uh, not like hi hello you if you directly message me something i will definitely you know answer that thing right and i might miss something if you think i have missed something please comment and you know let me know because as i told you i will be uh, you know releasing some uh, you know some material with this particular video it could be the blog post or something where i will be putting all this information links there right so at least i can put there or while editing this video i might uh, use that thing okay by the time it is getting deployed right so yeah sorry but at least uh, you know i can edit the uh, the blog post or something i will be writing based on your feedback and anything you want me to you know discuss or you know uh, something that i should cover with respect to natural language processing data science freelancing or something you should definitely comment so that i can create the next video i hope you find this video useful as i told you you will get everything uh, you know material from my side right thank you bye